Hi, so welcome back. Um, if you're watching us on the stream, you can ask questions on Twitter. Someone copied in um, a Twitter question for Grab um, to our system, but it was a bit too late for me to ask it. I didn't see it in time. Um, so sorry about that. Um, we're going to hear in a bit the next talk, but there's also a workshop going on um, about identity identifying unmapped um, highways and places that need mapping. So if you want to join that um, and you're on the venueless platform, you just need to switch channel to the workshops and panels. Um, but for this next talk, it's we've there's an Italian translation available. Um, so if you want to hear the audio in Italian, um, you need to join the mumble chat. Um, and the talk we have up now um, is about CART ONG's overall OSM-based strategy to support humanitarian response in refugee camp. And the title is From Global to Local OSM Mapping. So let's listen to that. Hey everyone, thank you for your participation. I'm Manon Yu from CART ONG. My colleague Camille Gueno, Etienne Delco, and I are pleased to present to you Carto NG's overall OSM based strategy to support humanitarian response in displaced and refugee sites from global to local OSM mapping. Let's start with a very quick presentation of Carto NG. So, we are a French H2H NGO created in 2006 specialized in information management. Our goal is to put data at the service of humanitarian development and social action projects. We are dedicated to improving the quality and accountability of field activity, and in particular through better need assessment, monitoring, and evaluation. We act as a multidisciplinary resources and expertise center, accompanying our partner strategy and operation. Our staff and volunteers also support the community by producing documentation, building capacities, and raising awareness on technical, strategic, and ethical challenges of the digital technology. CartoNG is one of UNHCR's implementing partner for mapping and information management projects. UNHCR is the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. The agency is mandated to aid and protect refugee, forcibly displaced community and stateless people. UNHCR provides life-saving assistance, including shelter, food and water, and intervene as necessary and appropriate to protect their safety, dignity and access to basic rights. And since, since 2006, Carto NG supports the agency in a larger range of activity, and in particular with OpenStreetMap. And this is the topic of today's presentation. As you may know, getting data on displaced and refugee sites has always been a challenge, given their fast evolution and the diversity of situation around the world. OpenStreetMap has been identified as a key resource to produce accurate, recent, and open data that can complement UNHCR's existing databases and also facilitate the access to the information of other actors, and in particular, the local ones, to support aid efforts. We would like to share our experience on building and implementing step-by-step -step since 2017 an overall strategy to support humanitarian response in refugee sites with UNHCR from remote mapping to OSM-based analytical tools for decision-making. We will focus on specific technical challenges, like dealing with accurate and precise data on a large number of sites from world scale to site level. The implementation of all of this is still ongoing, and the strategy also evolves as it moves forward to better fit the, the request of the partner, as well as the evolution of the OSM landscape. So we will present where we stand and what is still on progress. Step one, improve the consistency of the displaced and refugee site tagging model on OSM. In order to ensure wide and sustainable dissemination and effective consistency on the map and the database, tags, OSM tags, should be documented in a dedicated wiki page. For the mapping of displaced and refugee sites, it was not the case. As a result, the way to map and name or reference displaced and refugee site in OSM was quite inconsistent, making it very difficult to find and use this data. So if you needed to find a specific site, or if you wanted to extract data for analysis, it was really challenging. 
Even if there was actually data in the area you are looking for, if you don't know how to request it, it is probably you will not find anything. So we decided to launch the discussion among the OSM community and to propose a new OSM tag to map refugee and IDP locations. We get familiar with the process of creation and approval of the new tag. We documented our proposal on the OSM wiki and discuss it with the, the community through the wiki and the dedicated OSM mailing list, as well as directly uh, with actors working on the topic to try to involve as many persons as possible. And we finally put to a vote a first proposed tag, but this first proposition was rejected, which is not so in common for, for a first attempt. So we relaunched the discussion. It was really challenging to find a, a solution that aligns everybody's opinion and needs and respect to SM standards. But after almost three months, we, we finally proposed a new version of the tag with amenity equal refugee site, which was finally accepted. So this new documented and validated tag should improve accessibility of data on displaced and refugee sites. The update and cleaning of the database is a, is a work still in progress, but still 2020, the tag have been updated and used more than 600 times. That's pretty good. <laughs> but the improvement of consistency of data on displaced and refugee sites will not be complete without uh, updating and straightening a recommended uh, a data model for the mapping of these places. Uh, and Carto NG also participated to that. So this recommended data model was built from past experience and has been cross-checked and validated by UNHCR. It is now documented in a specific wiki page. This should allow various organizations and users to easily create, find, and share uh, data, including the location, as well as shelter, facility, and specific thematic information related to health, wars, education, etc. Step two, improve availability and quality of OSM data on displaced and refugee sites around the OSM maps are essential to get an initial understanding of many aspects of the site and its nearby environment in a context where most of the time no data at all or almost none is available. OSM allows to generate critical information such as the number and density of shelters, the condition of access to the site, the presence of host villages or other displaced and refugee settlements in the close proximity, the morphology of the place, the type of structure and disposition of shelters. OSM data can be used to directly produce maps or to plan further assessments and in particular field surveys. That's why it is so important to improve availability and the quality of data, not only for UNHCR purpose, but also for other actors and local communities. To do so, we have many tools and options in our hands. First, we did a first very large assessment of almost 1,000 sites in order to check data availability and quality. As a result, back in 2019, 23% were fully mapped on OSM, 11% were partially mapped, and 64% were not mapped at all. Then it was necessary to promote and facilitate the contribution on OSM on displaced and refugee linked area. So Carto NG implemented the following activities. We participated to create, update and maintain wiki documentation like how to map a refugee site or the one on data model. We organized events and trainings like Mapathon in the framework of the Missing Maps project. Since 2017, Carto NG mapped 47 sites for UNHCR with its community of volunteers during Mapathon. We also tried to promote cooperation among actors it includes coordination with other organizations working on this field, and in particular, HOT, IOM, and REACH, to accelerate effort of data cleaning, standardization, and completion of site referencing around the world. Second important task to improve availability and quality of OSM data is to promote data sharing and integration of organization internal data set into OSM database. This starts with our partner UNHCR. We support them implementing their own field data collection tools and methodology, and then import relevant and qualitative data into OSM. We had to build a correspondence data model to match UNHCR and OSM data structure. And now, the, now we integrate data when UNHCR has some available and up-to-date on specific sites. 
This will improve data availability for all and will encourage, we hope, other organizations to do the same. Step three, build a dedicated OSM replica for UNHCR specific use cases. As we aim to reuse the refugee camp data produced in OSM, it was decided to create a specific database. This database was of course to be based on OSM data, but was inspired by the internal UNHCR database to have as much similarity as possible between the two data sources. The OSM replica should meet several objectives. Obtain an extract from the OSM database that contains data related to refugee camps. For the purpose of this project, we are only interested in data located in or around refugee camps. We therefore need to filter by tag and coordinates before creating the database. Ensure that the data is up to date. As refugee camps are constantly evolving environments, it is imperative that we quickly retrieve the data produced or updated during Mapathon or by local contributions. Have the data in geographic format so that spatial operations can be performed. The final goal of the mapping of the camp is obviously to produce geographical analysis through the production of maps or dashboards. The availability of the data in geographic format is therefore imperative to avoid additional manipulations when using this data in GIS software. OpenStreetMap contains data on a multitude of topics. The first step was therefore a long work of identification of the OSM tags corresponding to the UNHCR data. This allows us to reduce the volume of data in our database and also to make comparative analysis between the two data sources. This represents a massive tag-by-tag -tag analysis. Even if we achieved a satisfying matching table, it is important to note that this correspondence is yet to be improved and must remain dynamic. Still with the objective of having an efficient database, we aim to retrieve data only on certain geographical areas. As the precise parameters of the camp are generally not available or sometimes impossible to determine, it was decided to use a buffer zone of 20 km around the known position of the camps. After studying the possible solution for the implementation of the database, we chose ImpoSM, an open source tool developed and supported by OmniScale. ImpoSM allows us to convert OSM data in PBF format to a PostGIS database which is the reference DBMS for spatial data and is perfectly suited to our needs. ImpoSM also allows to filter OSM data according to a geographical scope at the time of the creation of the database and allows to automate the update of the data and thus answer all our specifications. The list of tags resulting from the correspondence with the new HCR data model was used to build the mapping file used by ImpoSM. This mapping file defines the list of recovered tags as well as the table scheme in PostGIS. Given that we are creating a database on a reduced perimeter, 20 km around the displaced and refugee site, and that we want to remain as flexible as possible, we have chosen to handle the tag management problematic by putting all the tags associated with the object in a HStore type field. It is also interesting to note that this tool brings a particular focus on creating databases that are optimal for vector types management, one of the final goals of this project. Step 4. Monitor activity on OSM site mapping. For the space filtering of the data, ImpoSM 3 mechanism needed improvement. ImpoSM allows to filter the data by geometry during the initial import, but during automatic updates, this function is not available. By default, ImpoSM will continue to filter the tags that will integrate into the database the updates on a world scale. To solve this problem, it is possible to manually set up functions in PostGIS that are triggered before the data is inserted. We therefore develop a function that computes for each insertion of ImpoSM in the base if the object intersects the perimeter of the refugee site. If the object intersects, it is integrated normally in the table initially planned and is also entered in a table that monitors the data. The OSM replica has been configured from a planet import and is synchronized every day with the OSM data contribution. The import and synchronization of OSM data are done according to the mapping file in order to filter and order the OSM data at the global level in the form of thematic layers. We have been live testing this during multiple Mapathon events. Those are specific field missions during which Cartoon volunteers and contributors focused on filling a gap in the data on a specific refugee site. 
We were able to observe and validate the reliability and the robustness of this workflow. We were able to run concrete analysis and benefits from the OSM replica. Still, this is an ongoing work on which we are really open to comments and suggestions. Step five, generate a specific map rendering. The first use case that we would like to present consists of generating a specific refugee map rendering using vector tiles. The OSM data around displaced and refugee sites are relatively heavy, so the idea of rendering them via vector tiles is to improve the usability of the app by displaying data faster and smoother. Using the OSM replica allows us to be less dependent on OSM tiling services and to be able to render OSM data with tags that are specific to the refugee and IDP context. The objective is to create different styles, uh, focusing on the refugee thematic as well as sectoral styles such as for wash, health and shelters. Here are the steps to generate vector tiles from the OSM replica. So first, we are using Tegola, an open source vector tile server, which allows us to serve tiles on the fly directly from a Postgres database connection. Tegola uses a single configuration file that is used to identify the layers to be displayed in the tiles and their visible ranges. The styling, is then created using Maputnik, a well-known open source visual editor for the Mapbox style specification. And the next step consists of rendering this style in a Mapbox GL app, and then eventually in the site mapping web app for better and faster display purposes. So what you can see here on the slide is the actual state of the site mapping web app, and the visuals you see is based on the HCR data from their database. So uh, this is to give you an idea of what we would like to achieve with OSM data instead and uh, how it would look like eventually. Carto-NG has a particular interest in developing its own OSM vector tile server uh, first, to explore the possibilities of creating vector tiles with the eventual idea of being able to provide its partners with a customized uh, vector tile service. Also, uh, this work on vector tiles is still ongoing, especially on the styling uh, part. Performances already look very promising. Tegola's capacity to render tiles on the fly directly from the database, spares us the work of having to frequently update the vector tiles, which uh, in the case of the HCR is a very important aspect uh, in the context of frequent map patterns and uh, frequent data collections on the field. So for the next steps, uh, the idea would be to improve the OSM replica's current configuration by integrating uh, other tags other data and uh, adjust the layer organization to better meet the mapping needs of our partners. Step six, build OSM spatial analysis. The other use case that uh, we wanted to present uh, consists of building uh, a spatial analysis based on OSM data. So the objective is to generate buffer and distance analysis from the OSM replica and being able to assess the meeting of sphere standards for refugee sites. The objective is to be able to create analysis uh, products uh, such as maps and sector indicators and uh, make them available to the UNHCR team and other actors for field operations. So here are the steps uh, to generate the buffer and distance analysis from the OSM replica. First, uh, the analysis, uh, we generate the analysis uh, in the OSM replica PostGIS database. The analysis uh, consists of a buffer calculation and distance calculation 
but it can be extended to other kind of analysis depending on the partner's need. These analysis layers are then uh, served as vector tiles using the same setup as presented previously. And the idea is uh, to display the analysis in a Mapbox GL app and eventually make the OSM analysis available in the site mapping web app. What you can see here is uh, still the actual state of the site mapping web app with an analysis based on H uh, HCR data. Uh, so the idea is to create a similar analysis based on OSM data to complement the existing analysis and for data sources comparison purposes. Thank you very much for following us. As mentioned, this is a work still in progress and upgradable in many aspects. So we would be very happy to talk with you, share experiences, and of course, answer your question. Okay, so thank you for that talk. Um, uh, from the, the free people from Carp, Ong, um, Angie, but um, unfortunately, we've had some technical issues with them joining this video call. Um, Camille and Manon are available for questions of which there's um, been two asked. Um, so because they can't join this, we'll try and solve that for if we have issues with future talks. Um, but they're going to be available in the post talk chat room for you to ask questions there um, and discuss that. Um, but yeah, there were some questions about the, the mappings of the tags and questions about coordinating with other organizations so potentially a lot of um a lot of discussion going on there and our next talk um will be in 25 minutes so you've got lots of time to hear their questions cool